Hi, I'm Pam Martin here at the Kansas Wetlands Education Center at Cheyenne Bottoms, the largest inland marsh in the country. And today we're going to talk about tails behind tails. Didn't that sound fun? Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to read one of my favorite books, Little Skink's Tale. I'm going to move in closer so that you can see the wonderful illustrations with this book. Okay, let's see here. Okay, here we go. Little Skink basked on a big yellow rock in the rays of the morning sun. Her chilly body soon turned snugly warm. She twitched her bright blue tail. The little lizard was ready to start her day. Leaping to the forest floor, she poked her pointy nose into a crack in a rotting log and looked for breakfast. Sniff, sniff, she smelled ants. She loved ants. Gobble, 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 she gulped down one ant after another. Her tummy was almost full when she felt a peck on her tail. It was a large, hungry crow. Little Skink was trapped. There was no way, nowhere to run, but she had a trick. Quicker than the crow could blink, Little Skink snapped off her bright blue tail. Wiggle, waggle, wiggle, went the tail, wiggling wildly through the fallen leaves. The crow forgot all about Little Skink. It wanted that wiggling, waggling tail. As the crow bounced this way and that, Little Skink slinked under a log. She was safe. Her wiggling, waggling tail had saved her. The next morning, as Little Skink basked on her rock, she felt a little sad. She missed her bright blue tail, even though she was happy to be alive. As she lay basking and thinking, a cottontail rabbit hopped in front of her rock. Hmm, I wonder how I'd look with a tail like that, Little Skink thought. She pictured her new look, very cute, she thought to herself, but too puffy fluffy. Next, she tried a squirrel's tail. It's fun to flick and fluff, she said, but much too bushy. Day after day, little Skink imagined herself wearing the tail of every animal she met. A deer's tail. Look, I can wave it like a little flag, she said, but it's so short and stubby. A skunk's tail. Pee-you, said little skink. Stinky, stinky, stinky. A porcupine's tail. Oh, too stickly prickly, she said. An owl's tail. A lizard with feathers, she exclaimed. I don't think so. A turtle's tail. Too pointy, said Little Skink. While all were fine tails, not one was quite right for her. Then one day, as she scampered onto her sunny rock, 
Her shadow caught her eye. Her shadow had a tail. She whipped around. Sure enough, her tail had grown back. A skink needs a skink's tail, she said, and her tail-dreaming days were over. And here is little skink. This is a little um, plains skink. Now, he doesn't have his blue tail anymore. They don't keep that for very long, but you can tell how the tail is even now a different color than the black body. And he's only, well, here, let's see. Cassie, you put your finger kind of next to him. Yeah, look how tiny he is. He's just a little guy. So not very big at all. Um, there Again, they'll eat ants. We've been feeding him little crickets. And the tail, the reason that tail is blue, race runners are the same way. Little uh, juvenile race runners have a blue tail too. And that attracts the attention of the predator. A lot of times it's a bird. Um, I'm not sure if it would work with a snake, but it does work. Oh, there you can see his little tongue coming out. Yep, did you see it? He, they are just like um, snakes. They smell with their tongues. Oh, there he goes. He's going to burrow under. There he goes. <laughs> so anyway, that tail attracts the attention. And then it has what's called a fracture line uh, right at the base of the tail. And it's weak. So if the crow or whatever bird would be after him grabs that tail, it breaks off at the fracture line. There's no bones in the tail, it's just muscle. Okay, so we're going to turn this off now for him, and now we're going to show you what a grown-up uh, skink looks like. And here is our little skink, all grown up. They really get quite long. He's, I bet, about eight inches long, and they're just a beautiful. This is a male. And he's almost in his breeding color. Along the side there, he's going to get some orange scales, too, uh, when, it, when he's ready to, to mate and breed. So when they lose that tail, there's no blood loss. And it takes about six months for them to uh, grow a new tail. And the new tail's never quite the same, though. You notice how beautiful his is and how long. Well, it's not going to be like that when... Um, when they break it off and it grows back. And sometimes they'll actually grow two tails, which is kind of funny looking. A lot of times it's kind of stubby. And again, these guys, they eat crickets, they eat grasshoppers, and it's kind of fun to watch them eat. They shake that grasshopper or that cricket, and then they chomp it down because they really have very sharp teeth. You don't want to casually pick one of these up because they will bite you. Even the little guy, he'll try, but it doesn't work too well. So that is our little skink all grown up. Did you notice in the book um, when the deer was bounding off and they compared her tail to a flag, right? It's like a warning flag. Look out, look out. What she's doing is she's warning the other deer that there's danger. Um, rabbits are very similar. And they talked about, I'm just going to go off camera here just a second to get this. They talked about the um, cottontail rabbit having that white fluffy tail. And this is a jackrabbit, by the way. And uh, it has a white fluffy tail too, and it's white on the bottom. So they do the exact same thing. So is that, it, it's like a little, a little flag like this instead of a great big flag like the deer. But they're both doing the same thing. The other thing, um, when the skink lost its tail, I don't know if you've ever watched like a James Bond movie or like in the comics when they have the fancy spy car and that's an ejection seat and the... Um, like 007 or the spy ejects himself with a little parachute to get away. Well, that's kind of what the skink's tail is like, isn't it? So I've got some other items here. And what we're going to do is think about, hmm, what 
tail would be like the item. So the first one we have is some jewelry. Okay, really like bling. Okay, just think of bling. Okay, can you think of a tail that's like bling? Okay, think about that for a couple of seconds. See if you've got that one. Okay. Here's a syringe. Okay, you've got your, oh, let's say um, a vaccine in the syringe. And we've got a needle, right? Put the needle in the skin, push the vaccine or the medicine, the antibiotic into your body, right? Hmm, what animal has a tail that injects venom? Think about that. Okay, here's one, a fly swatter. Okay, I bet you can think of lots of animals that have tails, they're like fly swatters. Okay, got that one. Okay, how about food storage container? Okay, we've got a container here, it's got food in it. Can you think of an animal that stores food in its tail? Okay, got that one. Well, we have a net. Hmm. Now, this one you really, really have to think about. <laughs> Can you think of an animal that has a tail like a net and they catch their food with their tail? Okay. Think about that. And now we're going to go back and we're going to figure out what's what. Okay. Did you think of an animal that has bling on its tail? Did you think of maybe a peacock? A peacock? Or how about a turkey? They fan their tails out, don't they? The males, the toms. So the tom turkeys fan those tails out and they're just strutting around. They put their wings down. They do a dance with their tail. Um, now unlike a peacock, a peacock actually uh, vibrates its um, feathers and the eyes just shimmer. But it's pretty fancy. A turkey's tail is pretty fancy. So they're using their tail to show off for a girl. Now, sometimes it's the females or the girls that are showing off for the boys. But in this case, usually with the birds that have these beautiful tails, it's almost always the male that is um, showing off for the girls or the females. Okay. So that's a turkey. Oh, and I forgot another one. Okay, before we go any farther, because I really like this one. Okay, a blanket. Think of an animal that has a tail that they use like a blanket. Okay, think about that one. So we've done the blank. Now, how about the syringe? What do you think? Have any of you ever seen a scorpion? I'm going to bring this in closer. Um, okay. There we go. Closer. There we go. So the scorpion, I'm going to do that. I think you can maybe see the tail better that way. And you see how it's curled up over the body. And they have that stinger on the end of it. So what they do is they grab their prey with their pinchers, and they hold it still, and then they bring that tail around, it's curled, and they sting the, oh, say the cricket that they've caught. They've got five segments. They don't have bones, of course, what, you know, it's arachnid, it's related to spiders. They don't have any bones, they have an exoskeleton. So instead, they have five segments that for their tail, and then on the tip of their tail is the stinger. It's actually called a telson. The stinger has glands that produce venom. The venom is injected through that stinger into the cricket and it paralyzes the cricket so that, and then eventually kills it, but first it paralyzes it um, so that it's not struggling around for the uh, scorpion, because actually scorpions have kind of tiny mouths. So um, it, it works that way and some scorpions, if they lose their tail, just like the skink, they can grow it back. 
Some scorpions, not here, but in the tropics, can actually squirt venom out of that uh, stinger, the telson. So once they use their venom, and they learn to just use enough to paralyze their victim, because it takes their body a few days to replenish the venom. The other cool thing um, about the scorpions and their venom is that they use different tactics, like different types of scorpions use different types of ways to inject that uh, venom. Some of them whip the tail really wide. Some of them make real short little strokes. Depends on the type of prey that they're after and the habitat that they're in, you know, where they live. Okay, pretty cool, huh? Okay, so that's the scorpion. So it works just like a needle. And you know, we get a lot of our ideas from nature. Okay, did you figure out the fly swatter? Lots of animals use their tails as fly swatters, right? Um, what I was thinking of was a horse, but cattle do that, bison do that, zebras, giraffes, they're all getting rid of flies or mosquitoes with their tails. And scientists have done experiments to figure out, well, how does that tail work? Are they actually swatting it? Turns out they're not, at least not a horse. What the horse is doing is they're making, you know, they have the big long tails, unlike giraffes or bison or um, cows. And what it does is it moves the air. That tail moves the air really, really fast. And when it does that, it actually pushes the mosquitoes away or the flies away. Because, you know, flies and mosquitoes aren't very heavy. So instead of swatting it, they're like swishing it away. And of course, that only works within that area, you know, their back legs and over um, their hips. It doesn't work for the front, but the mane kind of helps keep it away from their neck. So this one is for animals with a swishing tail. Um, let's see. Oh, here's a really good one. How about the storage? Did you think of an animal that stores food in its tail? And this animal uses its tail for a lot. And that would be the beaver. Okay, so beaver, this is a baby one, by the way. <laughs> so it has a smaller tail. But their tail, and I'm going to bring this up close because um, their tail is really, really interesting. It has very few hairs in it. It's actually scales that cover it. It's kind of like leather. Okay. And you can see those little scales on there. So what they do in the uh, late summer and fall is they eat a whole lot. And that food is stored by, as fat in their tail. In the summer, if you were to measure the fat in their tail, it would only be like 15%. But in the winter, it's 50%. Now, they also gather twigs and leaves, and they store those under the water. Some of them are in their lodge, but what they do is they actually bring in big branches, and the branches sink. And then um, when it's warm enough, they go out and they gather that food. But if it gets too cold, they just stay in their lodge, and they live off the fat in their tail. Now, a lot of people think that they take their tail and they pat the mud on their lodges or on their dams that they make, but that's one thing they don't do. They don't actually use their tail. They use their um, paws, and they've got their web, big webbed feet on the back. Another thing they use their tail for is to support them when they're raised up like this to gnaw on the tree. It's like a brace. It supports them. It helps them swim by steering. In other words, it doesn't propel them through the water. They use their big back feet for that. It helps them to steer. And then one more thing it does is it slaps the water. If there's danger, say there's a bear around, they slap the water to warn the family that there's danger and then everybody dives. So it's an alarm system. Oh, and I forgot the alarm. Okay, so I got another one that I want to show you. Um, actually, you're going to have to hear this one. So here's another one. Okay, here we go. 
takes me a minute to get to it. Okay, that's an alarm. <laughs> so what animal? Now we just we just learned that the beaver does that. But there's another animal that's known for its alarm-like tail. Okay. Think about that one. And then we're going to go to, let's see, I did, oh, the net. Okay, this was a toughie. The net is hard. This net is like the tail on a bat. Bats actually catch insects out of the air with their tail. So they're flying through the air, right, using their echolocation sound to find the insect. And when they find the insect, they get closer and closer and closer, and they swoop it out of the air with their tail, and then they reach down while they're flying, mind you, they reach down, grab the insect, and eat it all while they're flying through the air. Amazing. Okay, so back to the alarm. Did you think of it? How about a rattlesnake? And the rattle on the end of a rattlesnake tail. Now each one of these is called a button, and this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They rarely get more than ten buttons because these are actually brittle, and each time they shed their skin, they get another button. But what happens is they break off, and they might have just two, and then they have to regrow them. The rattle doesn't have anything inside it. It's not like a baby rattle, you know, that you go like this. Um, what happens is they, rat, they rub against each other, and then they make the sound. And I could never even try to make this rattle like a rattlesnake does, because they have three muscles at the base of their spine, you know, right, right before the rattle, and they're vibration muscles. And they make that tail vibrate at 90 um, times per second. That's really fast. It's a blur. So it makes that high-pitched sound. Okay. And you really want to hear that. Now, baby rattlesnakes, um, when they hatch, they don't have a rattle. So that makes them a, a little scarier because they can't warn you. But then when they have that first shed, they get their first button. And then again, each shed, they get more. Unfortunately, when they're young, they're growing fast, so they shed more. So they get those buttons pretty quickly. Okay, so that's how a rattlesnake uh, works. Now, I've got another couple to, oh, oh, the blanket. Can't forget the blanket. Okay, did you figure out the blanket? What tail is like a blanket? Okay, think about it. I'm gonna get the animal. Okay. A fox! One of my favorite animals. Isn't he beautiful? A red, it doesn't matter. Red fox, gray fox. Um, even coyotes do this, but fox are known for it. What they'll do is they'll set, and you know, they hunt in the snow, right? They don't hibernate. They're out there hunting. And when they set down, they curl their tail around their toes. And so it's like a warm, furry, blanket right around their toes. Isn't that cool? Okay, another one. Now, I, I don't have an equivalent uh, item for this, but what about skunks? This is, they kind, of, they kind of have the alarm first, right? They give you a warning. They'll stamp their back feet, and if you don't get out of there, then they raise that tail, and what do they do? They squirt out a substance that just smells terrible, doesn't it? So that's how they, their tail is a defensive weapon. And also kind of an alarm, too, because like I said, they warn. They warn with the tail. And once, like our fox here, if he was going after like a young um, skunk, after he's been sprayed, they don't go after skunks. The only predator that actually will hunt out a skunk is a great horned owl. But birds don't have a good sense of smell, do they? And 
they have silent flight. So when they swoop down on the skunk, the skunk doesn't even have time to spray. Okay, now we're going to get ready and show you another animal with a really, really cool tail. In just a second. Okay, our, uh, our last animal here who has an amazing tail is an opossum. This is Petunia the opossum. And she's having a little fruit snack here. They love, 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 love fruit. But you know, a lot of people, they're kind of grossed out by their tail because their tail is scaly, kind of like the beaver's tail. It's long, it doesn't have any fur on it. But, whoops, <laughs> sorry girl. Um, but it's really, really cool. It's what we call a prehensile tail, like a monkey has, like a holler monkey or a spider monkey. In other words, they use it like a fifth hand. So when she's climbing in a tree, um, she'll wrap that tail around the limb. And as she moves forward, the tail moves forward too. But it gives her extra security. Um, it's an extra grip on that branch. And it also helps with her balance as she's um, walking along that branch. She's, I can't feed her too much. She's already a little overweight, as you can see. <laughs> but she has a beautiful fur. Um, now, a lot of people think that opossums can hang from their tails. Maybe briefly, like, like 10 seconds. Um, you know, they're heavy. Now, when they're little, they can do that for a little bit of time, a little longer. But once they get past, oh, like four months of age, they're not gonna, you're not going to find them sleeping, hanging from their tails. They just can't do it. The tail's not that strong. But it's strong enough to act as um, that, fifth, that fifth paw. The other thing that's really cool, well, there's lots of cool things about a process, but one of the other things is that on her back foot here, and I don't know, she probably won't let me show you, uh, they have what looks like an opposable thumb. It's actually an opposable big toe. And again, it helps to grab that branch. And they'll walk like this on that branch, one foot in front of the other, and that opposable toe just grabs the branch. It's really, really, really cool. Um, opossums have very, like I said, very thick, soft fur. They're not dirty. People think that they're dirty because, you know, you find them eat garbage. Well, they do eat garbage. They're omnivores. They eat almost anything. They love eggs. They, as you just saw, they love fruits and vegetables. They'll eat um, insects. Mulberries are a favorite. Strawberries, tomatoes, they're just not real picky. I'm going to give her one last big strawberry. There you go. She loves that. Oh boy. Nom, 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 nom. And you see, she uses her paws to hold the food. Oh, wow. She really loves her food. <laughs> she gets into it. Um, they don't have any hair on their ear flaps. They're just kind of leather, leathery. And their eyes, they don't have the best eyesight. They're, they're nearsighted. So what they do, they have these really long whiskers. They're nocturnal. So they use those really long whiskers to feel with. And they smell. They have an amazing sense of smell. And you'll see her, she's kind of like a snuffleupagus if you ever watched, um, oh, be careful, Sesame Street. Okay, so she's always doing that. Yeah, she wants the fruit to go by. Don't fall off the edge here. Um, other really amazing things, they're the only marsupial in North America. Now marsupial means they have a pouch for their babies to stay in. And the babies, when they're born, are just the size of a jelly bean. But they have these really, really large front legs. So they have to climb three inches uh, from where they're born, um, from there up to the pouch. And then they find a teat where the milk is, and they attach, and they stay there for two months. And then gradually they'll come out, and they'll stay on mama's back. And they use their tails to grab onto the fur on mama's back. So they, even when they're young, they're using those tails. Other things, yeah, she's saying, okay, okay, I've been out here enough. Um, other things they use their tail, or that opossums are really 
special about is that they're immune to snake venom. The only snake venom that they're not immune to is the coral snake. So if they get bitten by a snake, they may not feel well for a little while, but within 30 minutes they just shake it off. And they've done a lot of experiments with the uh, protein, it's a protein they have in their body that negates the effect of the poison, the venom. And what they're doing is they're trying to develop an anti-venom for people using their protein. And they've had some success with that. They also um, don't catch rabies, hardly ever. And they have a very, very low body temperature. Well, I mean, it's like three to four degrees lower than any other mammal. And it's thought that that's why they don't catch rabies, because every other mammal does. Hey, where are you going? Come here, Petunia. Come on. Come on over here. I'm going to get on the other side. See how I'm holding her tail? If I would pick her up, um, she's going to put that tail around me to help hold on. Okay, you getting about ready to go in? Yes, yes. So those are just a few facts about opossums that are super cool. We could talk about them for quite a while. But she's getting a little nervous, so we're going to let her go. She feels safe in her carrier. So in she goes. And those are some tales behind tales. Hope you enjoyed this, and if you get a chance, come on out and visit us. We're open now. Uh, the exhibits will be all out as of June 1st. Hope to see you. Bye-bye.